Hey guys, my name is Adam and I'm here with episode number 33 of Let's Play XCOM Enemy Unknown. So we have a lot of stuff coming up here today. We have improved pistols, which will definitely be done in this episode. We have a plasma sniper rifle that is going to be researched. We have the Firestorm, which is our brand new aircraft that is currently under construction. So we have a lot of good stuff coming up. So let's start scanning for activity and see what we can find out. First off, improved pistols. Excellent. And if we go to the foundry have that completed and I may just go for improved pistols too it seems to have been doing um, a lot of good things for us and we certainly use pistols a lot especially with our snipers and we have a lot of snipers in the squad now so that might be a good idea or I could go for the heavy weapons platform perhaps uh, this could be quite interesting actually um, yeah you know what I'm going to try this out it's only 70 credits to do it so I figure why not uh, it'll take seven days to complete so let's try that out Hopefully in the next episode I can show that You're off. Certainly keeping the boys down in the foundry busy. I'll let them know you've got another project ready for production. Please do, Shen. Excellent. All right, back to scanning. And the plasma sniper rifle is now complete. Perhaps it was inevitable that we eventually be called upon to develop a weapon of this kind, just as we did with the advent of laser-based weapons. By concentrating our efforts on a single focused discharge of plasma and ignoring some of the previous design constraints regarding size, weight, and rate of fire, we've developed an extremely lethal long-range weapon. Our snipers will undoubtedly be pleased with this weapon's ability to devastate hostile targets from previously unheard of distances. Excellent. So these guys are absolutely insane, and I'm certainly going to pick some up. It also looks really, really cool as well. And it should be good. Alright, with our next bit of research, I am trying to decide what I want. Um, I could go for the plasma cannon here on the um, starships. That could be good. On our uh, space fighters. Or I could do some interrogations, maybe. Uh, EMP cannon on the starships. That might be a good idea. Archangel armor is very good. But I think that what I want, at least for right now, is to do a little bit of interrogations. I think that interrogating a berserker could be fun. I didn't even know we actually captured one alive, but I guess we did. Let's interrogate him. See what he knows. He's probably not going to be happy about this. These things are very violent. Oh, he just doesn't care. Yeah, he's, he, he says bring it on. <laughs> he's going to break the machines. Oh. Well, alright. There he was. We'll find out about him in one day. Ah. Uh. There we go. Alright, what does he know? Armor technology research credit earned. This captain was even more violent and aggressive than we expected, exceeding the previous limits established by the floater and muton species. Despite heavy sedation, it was virtually impossible to control the subject, leaving us with little re uh, recourse other than to increase the vigor of our tactics. After probing several regions of the captive's brain, we managed to find an appropriate stimulus to calm the beast, after which we put the captive through a number of controlled physical tests. So yeah, this thing is kind of ridiculous. By observing the subject's movements while burdened by the massive suit of armor it is outfitted with, we've gained enormous insight into how the invaders approach the difficult design questions associated with creating a heavy armor suit. Striking a balance between effective armor coverage and maneuverability in the field is no easy task, but this data should prove invaluable to our own efforts. Always nice. Alright, next bit of research. I think I will do one more interrogation. Or maybe I could do an autopsy. That could be good. I still have yet to do a sectopod or a sectoid autopsy. That could be good. Um, I'm going to go for heavy floater autopsy because they're kind of a new enemy and we need to know a little bit more about them. Another variation on a previously identified specimen. This is the heavy floater. As you can see, the aliens have made substantial improvements to the armor and weapon systems available while removing some of its exposed vulnerabilities. An extremely dangerous combatant. Yeah, these guys are definitely maneuverable. So we need to be careful of them, and we can keep scanning, and there we go. What have we found out? Advanced Repair Project, available in the Foundry. Another variation on a previously identified specimen, this is Heavy Floater. A cursory examination reveals substantial improvements to the armor and weapon systems available to the creature. Much of the exposed tissue, the floater's most obvious vulnerability, has either been shielded or removed entirely. Yes, because we saw a lot of flesh on the old floater design. Very interesting. And we have Advanced Repair available to us. As our understanding of alien materials grows, we believe that we can develop processes that would reduce the repair times of our firecraft and shiv units significantly. Use the new project option in the foundry to undertake that, and we may just do that. But for right now, what we need is heavy plasma, I think. We need to get our heavies outfitted with the 
newest and best gear. So let's do that. Only take five days, which isn't bad. And we do have new soldiers in the barracks. So let's say hi to them. And give them some skills. So, first off, we have an assault, which we could definitely use. There we go. We have James Reed here, who is a support, which is great. And we have another support here. And finally, we have a heavy, which is always welcome into the missions. All right. There we go. There's our squad. Now we still have those um, three people off for sonic testing. They'll be back in four days, which hopefully I won't have a mission before then because I'd really like to have Alan back. But let's see what we get. Also, the firestorm is almost completed, but it looks like Argentina wants our laser weaponry, which I think we can probably just do. Um, the thing is, we have plasma weaponry now, so we don't really need them. And they're willing to give us engineers for it, so I think I will go ahead and just dispatch them. Yep, there you go. Alright, Firestorm should be coming in, but here is the Overseer. I'm going to probably ignore him because I don't have a Firestorm. Who do I have here? I have, yeah, these guys just have basic weaponry. I think I'm just going to avoid him. Now we have the Firestorm, though. I would say so, yeah. A lot of alien components in that baby. Alright. We've done some big things here, but I have to admit, my team and I are most proud of the work we put into the Firestorm. Yeah, did a good job. Also, we have two of them, so we can spread them out over a couple different continents. Um, I don't want to get any more, really, because then I... It's going to take up a lot of my resources, and I don't really want that, but I can get some tracking. I think that could be good. Let's grab two of those, just in case. And uh, that that's going to take up all our cyber disc wrecks, but I think that's worth it. And if we go over to the hangar, and we can choose where we want our guys to go. So they're called demons, which seems uh, pretty fun. So I'll keep one in Europe, and I'm going to transfer the other one over to Asia, maybe? Or I could put him in North America. I guess I'll put him in... I'll put you in North America, I think. Is that what I want? I, yeah, I guess so. Yeah. Also, I'm going to put some better weaponry on you, so let's, let's give you a laser cannon, I think. Yeah, these Phoenix cannons aren't that good. Hit chance is only 85 on that, but I think it's better. Yeah, armor penetration is better. Damage is the same, but... I don't know. I, I'm going to go with laser cannon, I think. I think that'll be the best for it, honestly. And we just need to work on getting that completed. Our side testing is almost done as well. We may be onto something, Commander. All right. The latest candidate is different. We're picking up levels of psionic energy unlike any we've detected in the previous tests. Let's view the results. Ever since mankind first looked up at the stars, we have wondered what lies beyond. So very few have dared to look in the of the human mind hold more secrets than we can possibly imagine. How ironic that the means to defeat our enemy comes not through weapons or machines of war, but from the sea. And if we have succeeded, we will have gained a glimpse of what we are to become. We will have created something extraordinary. There we go. Psionic training. Psy experimentation has revealed that one of our soldiers has psionic powers to view available psi training. 
Go to the barracks and grant this soldier a Psy promotion. New Sonic training options will become available as the soldier uses Psy abilities in combat. There we go. Alan, our uh, best out of the group. He's gifted. The others are not, sadly, but that's all right. Because if we go to barracks and we take a look at Alan, very nice Psy symbol there. And we can do Psy abilities. And he now has a Mind Fray. Use Psy abilities in combat to... Oh, that's just... Okay. So we don't actually know what this thing is. But... Hopefully we'll see that in the future. Yep. This will cause the target to lose grip on reality, inflicting penalties to aim, will, and mobility, and doing 5 base damage. So not bad. Um, unfortunately, robotic enemies are immune because, of course, they don't have a brain, but we'll find out what they work on and don't work on in future episodes, I'm sure. Alright, so there we go. Alan will be back to leading the squad, and he has some new toys to bring to the group, so that's always nice. And here's the heavy plasma that is complete. In addition to manufacturing our own heavy plasmas, our soldiers should now be able to use any that are recovered from the battlefield. Heavy plasma is available for manufacture, and the Shiv Plasma project is also available in the foundry. We've struggled to maintain a test environment that minimizes the safety risks involved in these experiments, but at the same time does not limit our imagination when it comes to new developments. With those logistical issues handled efficiently through uh, efficiently enough by the by the engineering team, we proceeded in our initial prototyping. Although we spent a great deal of time studying the alien's own heavy plasma rifle, there was still a number of questions surrounding its enhanced functionality. Maintaining an acceptable level of energy efficiency while also increasing the weapon's output was not an easy task, but it looks like our engineers and scientists have worked together and found an answer, so it's always good. Alright, heavy plasma. The heavy plasma rifle uses an expanded power supply and cooling mechanism to allow for a much higher rate of fire than anything we fielded previously. So that's always nice, and the Shiv Plasma is also at our disposal, which is great. But let's work on an autopsy, I think. Let's do the, sec uh, the sectoid autopsy. I think that it's long overdue, so let's take care of that. We've made a number of interesting discoveries based on the autopsy results of the alien specimen you brought back. The research team is now referring to this particular variation as a sectoid based on the unusual structure of its internal organs, which we believe to be the product of genetic manipulation. As we've seen in the field, this species also seems to harbor some sort of telepathic ability. Yep. We have seen a sectoid commander as well, and they seem to have very, very good psi powers. There we go. What do we find out? Uplink targeting aim, available for manufacture. We found no discernible genetic variance between any of the small humanoid aliens that have been examined thus far. They are perfect genetic copies, each and every one of them. The subject's brain is quite sizable with respect to its body, and appears to have been augmented even further with cybernetic implants of some kind. Considering the fragile nature of this creature's physical form, it is safe to assume these implants were intended to somehow improve the combat effectiveness of the species. Dr. Shen and the engineering team have already developed several theories as to how we might be able to adapt these impl implants for our own use. Additional tactical information may be available in the field when viewing hostiles in the unit analysis view. Alright. And Dr. Valen's personal note. Cloning and genetic ma manipulation, biomedical implants. The implications of this technology and the alien's motives are not reassuring. Right. So here we go. Uplink targeting aim. Activate this module during interception to provide an immediate temporary boost to our unit's accuracy. The module will burn out after one use. Its technology is based on sectoid implants and allows us to send a data pulse through our satellite network. Alright, so that's it. And we're going to choose one more bit of research for this episode. I think we're going to go for the alloy cannon. This is a very, very powerful shotgun. The most powerful in the game, so let's take care of that. Only It will only take four days, so I'm pretty confident with that. And let's do a little bit more scanning, shall we? There's the heavy weapons platform. It's beautiful. And we can actually pick one up, I do believe. If I know where it's actually at. I think it's here. Is it in the foundry? Uh, might be. Also, I should show off combat stims at some point, which hopefully I will. But, uh, yeah. We could also do with getting those uh, plasma snipers. They're very expensive, as you can see. But very worth the price, in my opinion. Okay, so I guess it's in the foundry. Uh... Don't actually remember. Do you just get one? Have that might be it. No, no. Here it is. Homer Shiv, Alloy Shiv. Further, Think that's it. it? Just that they were yeah, it's mobile cover, basically. Yeah. 
Okay, so here they are. I'll take a look at them further in the next couple of episodes. As I said, I've never used them before, so be a new experience for everyone. Alright guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Let's Play XCOM Enemy Unknown. Sorry for no fighting. This was definitely a episode where I did a lot of research and a lot of manufacturing. So, uh, sorry about that. I know the combat's a little more exciting than that, but nonetheless, hope you guys enjoyed this episode, and I will see you in future videos.